Welcome back to Face the State on this Sunday morning. COVID-19 and the economy. The virus has been brutal on Connecticut businesses. With us now, the Lieutenant Governor of our state, Susan Bysowitz. And we should point out that you're the actual governor this week because Governor Lamont is actually vacationing this week. So you are officially in charge. So, right, welcome. Indeed I, indeed I am, and it's nice to be with you. And you're joining us from the new London Mayor's Office today of Michael Pastoros. So thanks so much for being with us here today. I, I want to ask you, first of all, so a, a, as you look at these COVID numbers that are coming out, what are you reading into them? Well, con Connecticut continues to do very well in terms of all the metrics, the fatalities, the infection rates are is very low, under 1%. And we continue to have a lot of people getting tested at the same time as we have college students coming in from other states to attend college here in Connecticut. Um, we've seen some infections uh, amongst UConn students uh, as students have been tested. Uh, and so we have to continue to be vigilant. Speaking of those UConn students, I'm sure you saw the videos. There were some parties where people were not social distancing and not wearing masks. Um, what did what did you think when you actually saw that? Well, I'm glad that my kids are no longer in college, uh, but also um, I was impressed with the swift action that UConn took to remove those students from on-campus housing. Um, so hopefully after that example is set, students will realize that they really do have to keep safe by wearing masks, keeping social distancing and washing their hands. You know, concerts and things like that have been called super spreaders. And that was one reason why the state decided to delay opening bars. When do you see that happening? Um, we are going to continue to monitor the situation uh, that was something we were looking at doing in either July or August, uh, but because of the significant increase in the infection rate in other states, and we currently have dozens of states that are on our travel ban, I think until other states uh, get their infection rates under control, I think it's hard for us to consider continuing to open very large venues and and bars. Let's talk about the economic impact of COVID-19 on the Connecticut economy. And I, I'll i use downtown Hartford as an example because so many of those companies that fill those skyscrapers and all those workers, they go out to lunch, they go to the gyms, they go to the stores, they're not there right now. And so many of these downtown businesses are suffering and even some longtime restaurants have decided we cannot do this any longer and they have closed for good. Uh, what do you tell merchants right now who are really just, just barely getting by? Oh, it's, it's so tragic um, to see these longstanding uh, restaurants close their doors that have been iconic institutions um, across our state. Really, we've had this problem. Uh, we have to continue to keep each other safe and keep our infection rate as low as possible because otherwise it will be hard for us to continue to reopen our economy. And until people feel safe, um, and are back working in office buildings and going to restaurants, you know, till people have confidence, we're not going to be able to uh, recover fully. Well, in terms of attracting new businesses, what's out there to attract? Well, I'll tell you, businesses have been incredibly creative. So I'll give you an example. So today um, I was at a, um, a pickup point where people were donating school supplies and there was a, a company owned by women, two women, it's called Mizzy. And Mizzy is a manufacturing company that's located in Portland. And they were making natural health and beauty products. But when COVID hit, they turned to making hand sanitizer products and sanitation pro uh, products for uh, companies, hospitals, and schools to use. So I think a lot of businesses in Connecticut have had to be innovative, have had to be creative. And so now we have uh, dozens and dozens of companies that are manufacturing personal protective equipment and hand sanitizer, which a lot of people have need for. We haven't had any new numbers recently, but as of June, 16,000 New Yorkers had moved to Connecticut. I believe uh, uh, in the metro area, metro Hartford area, there were uh, you know, at least 500 of them across the city and the suburbs. Fairfield County, of course, getting the bulk of them. What about luring businesses from New York to Connecticut? 
I think people, uh, uh, we are seeing people go not just to Fairfield County to buy homes, but to Litchfield County and also along the southeast shoreline from Madison to Stonington. We've, we've gotten a lot of reports of bidding wars for uh, homes on the water. So people are coming to our state. At the same time, they're coming here because they can either work from home or they're moving their offices here. And uh, we've learned from mayors in Fairfield County and also in the Brantford area that people are looking for office space to relocate their businesses because we are strategically located between Boston and New York and people are realizing they can work from home and live in our beautiful state and enjoy our very high quality of life and our great schools. So how do we grow on that? Uh, well, I'll tell you that our Department of Economic and Community Development is act and the governor and I are actively marketing our state to individuals and to businesses. And we've also made an investment of more than a million dollars to surrounding states to do advertising for tourism opportunities and trying to get people from our surrounding states to come to Connecticut. And when they come here, they will also see uh, the great opportunity uh, to start a business or locate their existing business here. You spearheaded the effort for the 2020 census. What, did, what have we learned from it so far and how is it going? So it is going extremely well. People should know they have until October 31st to complete uh, the census. Um, but the Census Bureau is stopping the enumeration process um, at the end of September. So if you haven't completed the census, I hope people will do that. Uh, go to 2020census.gov or call the 800 number uh, to date nearly 68% of the households across the state have filled out the census, which is uh, a high in the Northeastern region. We continue to be one of the highest self-responding um, states in the country. And we also have thousands of census takers that as we speak are, are knocking on doors, particularly in urban areas that are hard to count. So we do need uh, more people to respond in our largest cities, particularly Hartford, Bridgeport, New Haven and Waterbury. Uh, and we appeal to folks who live in those cities to please, please fill it out. I wanna talk a little bit about Biden-Harris Democratic Convention this past week. Uh, what do you think of Senator Kamala Harris as Joe Biden's running mate? And what do you think that the ticket's chances are this fall? Well, this month and actually yesterday, we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage. And so it was thrilling to hear that uh, uh, Vice President Biden had chosen Kamala Harris. She brings, it, she's in a historic choice uh, because she is the first uh, woman of color nominated by either major party to be vice president. And I think she's going to bring a competence compassion and character to the White House. Have you uh, met Mr. Biden before? Absolutely. The governor and I hosted a fundraiser for him uh, in October, and we hosted a virtual fundraiser uh, for him on August 5th. And uh, both of us have been campaigning mainly virtually for him uh, since we were early endorsers of him. Governor Lamont was the first governor in the country, I believe, to uh, endorse uh, Joe Biden. So we're very proud to be early supporters and it's been very exciting to uh, watch the convention proceedings. Both the governor and I are delegates to the national convention um, and the big night is, is coming up. And it's, it's, it's really been quite exciting to, to watch the proceedings, although not quite as exciting as having 10,000 uh, Democrats around us. As we talk about women uh, this past week uh, with you know, the convention, uh, former President Bill Clinton also spoke, and there was some criticism as to why he was there, because in this Me Too era, uh, his legacy is being reexamined. Do you believe that was a good call to put him out there on national television? He is uh, a former president uh, of the United States, and we also heard from uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, and we've been hearing from family members of former presidents. Uh, we heard from uh, Caroline Kennedy uh, as well, and uh, I think um, it's been exciting to see people 
that are very diverse, people from all parts of the country, people from all ages who are participating in the Democratic National Convention. And I think we are going to see a sharp contrast to what our convention looked like compared to the Republicans. I don't think you'll see that uh, diversity. Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz, we thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we will have you back here in person when it is safe to do so uh, once these COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. We thank you for being with us. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me.